What is going on Yon Nation? Today we got a developer live stream from CD Projekt Red, where they took a deep dive into features coming to Cyberpunk 2077, including the reworked perks, relic tree, revamped police system, vehicle combat, and new dynamic missions. So today I'm going to be summing up and breaking down everything new shown off during the showcase. When it comes to when you can pick up and play Phantom Liberty, this will be opened up right after the Voodoo Boys and Brigitte mission from the main story. If you're starting a new playthrough, you can also skip right ahead to the expansion, in a similar sense to the Witcher expansions. Any saves beyond that Voodoo Boy mission, but before you meet Hanako at Embers, will cue the call from Songbird, which will unlock the expansion. So this is good news for those of you who have scattered saves who want to jump in with an existing character. Looks like you're going to have to make Hanako wait another 84 years. You can also jump from Dogtown and PL specific missions to the base game missions, and it will be seamlessly integrated. From the story side of things, we obviously know that Rosalind Myers, president of the NUSA, has crashed, and that Songbird is on board. But it's revealed here that Kurt has actually hacked the Space Force 1 to crash into Dogtown. A little weird since it does look like it was shot down in the trailers, but maybe it's a combination of these. Anyways, my suspicion is that Songbird is potentially involved. You're telling me that one of the best netrunners in the world allowed a military man to crash the plane? I ain't buying it. Songbird is the one that will unlock the relic skills for you, and is shown suppressing Johnny so that she can take more control over your skills. Relic skills are new ways to empower your cyberware, and we did see a ton of new ones in the New Ways to Play trailer, including the empowered Gorilla Fists, Mantis Blade Lunges, and Wrist Rocket Volleys. But the gameplay in the back here also does scrub through a few new ones, so let's take a closer look. The first one is in the middle which is called Jailbreak, and looks to unlock all the options we have for our armed cybernetics, including the monowire. This shows what Mantis Blade unlock we receive, which is that upon dismembering an enemy or performing a finisher, the Mantis Blades will allow for a charged leap attack. This will give you 30 meters more range and deals massive damage with the wide slash that hits nearby enemies. Killing an enemy will dismember, so it does appear to be pretty chainable. They also show off the new preview sections of the skills which I think is a nice quality of life feature. The Gorilla Arm skill is also shown a bit later in the showcase, and mentions that attacking with the Gorilla Arms now charges them up. When they're fully charged, a strong attack deals massive damage, and creates a shockwave staggering nearby enemies. Neutralizing an enemy this way will send their body flying, and this is 100% going to be my favorite alongside the Tomb Chugger skills. Next we have Emergency Cloaking which improves Optical Camo. You can activate this during combat to exit combat and sneak away. This obviously requires you to have optical camo first equipped in your inventory, and this one is a new item that was added in a subsequent patch. The sensory protocol skill is shown but the cam is blocking the text unfortunately, so you'll just have to check out the preview window for a hint. We've talked about the vulnerability analysis which gives you these red diamonds on enemies to target. If you do enough damage to these vulnerabilities, it will explode causing an EMP blast in a 3 meter radius. There's also another skill associated called Machine Learning. If you do destroy an enemy's vulnerability, you'll get a plus 10% frequency of new vulnerabilities appearing with an additional 5% crit damage to these vulnerabilities. This can stack 5 times and max stacks double the effects, which seems insanely powerful. Data tunneling is one that we haven't seen and allows you to upload quick hacks to your monowire. This skill mentions that an enemy affected by a monowire uploaded quick hack can spread that hack to others upon hitting multiple of them. We have the volley wrist rockets which specking into can gain you access to more rockets, a shockwave buff for the gorilla fist that knocks down enemies in range, and spatial mapping which allows you to cripple enemies with mantis blade based leap attacks. There's also an increased chance to dismember with this one. The team mentions that receiving points for the relic skill tree is exclusive to exploration, and you'll have to find Militech data terminals to hack them. They actually won't even be marked on the map either, so it's going to be valuable to check every nook and cranny in Dogtown. Moving on to the regular perks, we first see the Hack Queue perk, which allows you to upload and queue multiple hacks onto your enemies. These hacks uniquely interact with each other in some instances, making for some interesting combinations. Feedback loop is also shown which gives a 25% RAM recovery rate for each quick hack currently in the queue. Queue acceleration which increases max RAM by 1 at level 1 and reduces the RAM cost to quick hack devices and vehicles at level 2. Queue mastery is also shown which reduces the RAM cost of the latest quick hack to fill a queue by 50% and locks the queue until all quick hacks have uploaded. Embedded exploit gives you a 10% RAM recovery rate at level 1 and a 60% buff to quick hack damage against enemies affected by control quick hacks, covert quick hacks, or distraction quick hacks. There's also this legend skill that's logged, super intrigued about this one but they sadly didn't scroll over it. 
Moving on to the next branch, we have Spillover, which gives a 50% chance for quick hacks to spread to an additional target when Overclock is active. Overclock is shown next and allows you to upload quick hacks even with insufficient RAM and will instead use your health. Reflexes is one of my favorite trees, and we see Tailwind, which gives plus 25 stamina from performing air dashes and double jump. Let's move on to the air dash, which we did see in the new ways to play trailer. Level 1 will reduce the stamina cost of dashing by 20%, and level 2 will see a 20% buff to dash speed. Level 3 unlocks the ability to dash in mid-air. Where my zoomy boy is at? There's also a dash that replaces dodging. At level 1, this skill will simply reduce the stamina cost of dodging and dashing. And level 2 will actually unlock the dash, which will allow you to cover more ground and vault over low obstacles. The next one shown is called Slippery and makes it more difficult for enemies to shoot you the faster that you move. This effect is increased when dashing, dodging, sliding, and vaulting. Muscle Memory is another skill which allows you to reload your weapons while sprinting, sliding, and vaulting. And Multitasker will allow you to shoot while sprinting, sliding, and vaulting, and I believe these two already exist in 2077. Ready, Rested, and Reloaded will reduce the stamina cost for shooting with rifles and SMGs at level 1. Sharpshooter will increase your aim speed by 15% at level 1. Salt in the Wound is a bit cut off, but shooting the same target 7 times will trigger bonus damage by the looks of it. Blade Runner is a new finisher perk which at level 1 will reduce the stamina cost for all attacks with blades. At level 2 will buff the attack speed of blades by 20%, and at level 3 will unlock a blade finisher which restores 25% of your health. If you've watched my latest analysis video, you would have caught all three Edge Runner perks. And here we have the David Martinez tree called Edge Runner. This allows you to exceed your cyberware capacity by 50 points at the cost of 0.5% max health per point. When you neutralize an enemy during combat, there's a 0.1% chance for each point that you're over capacity to enter a Fury State, which grants you 10% damage, 30% critical chance, and 50% critical damage for 12 seconds. Fury State is not cyberpsychosis, and you will have full control of your character. License to Chrome will give you a 10% buff to Cyberware stat modifiers at level 1, plus 40 armor at level 2, and unlocks a new Cyberware slot for the Skeleton at level 3. All Skeleton Cyberware have boosted stats. All Things Cyber gives plus 1% to all Cyberware stat modifiers, and level 2 will grant a minus 20% Cyberware capacity cost for Cyberware in the Integumentary system and Skeleton system. Renaissance Punk was scrolled over for just a millisecond, but this gives a plus 4 cyberware capacity for each attribute that's 9 or higher. Demolition Surplus will give you an additional grenade charge and a 250% recharge speed for grenades outside of combat. Health Freak will give you an 8% recharge speed for health items and grenades, and at level 2 will give you a plus 1 health item charge. Field Medic gives a 15% faster use of health items in combat, and Friendlier Fire gives a 50% resistance to damage and effects from explosions that you cause. Pyromania seems to emulate Health Freak at level 1, and at level 2 buffs the explosion radius for grenades. Heat Shield is a new one, and gives a 10% mitigation chance per stack of Pyromania. Ticking Time Bomb creates a powerful EMP that hits nearby enemies after 3 seconds whenever you activate Operating System Cyberware. Moving to the Cool Tree in the Throwable section, another favorite of mine, and Pounce will allow you to perform finishers from a greater distance once you've hit the enemy with a throwable weapon. Each successful throw also makes them more susceptible to finishers. Style over substance, love the name, will mean that you get guaranteed critical hits with throwable weapons when crouch sprinting, sliding, dodging, or dashing. There is no movement speed penalty when aiming a throwable weapon. Nerves of Tungsten Steel gives you guaranteed crit hits for headshots when Deadeye is active, something we saw again in the most recent trailer. Deadeye also looks like it gives some sort of increased auto aim or headshot bonus here. Focus gives a plus 10% headshot and weak spot damage bonus, something that might tie in nicely with the vulnerability relic skill. We go into Onslaught in the body tree where you get a plus 20% ammo refill after neutralizing an enemy with an LMG. Pain to gain which activates when adrenaline rush is active, gives a 20% health item recharge after you neutralize an enemy. If you're wondering about adrenaline rush, at level 1 this gives plus 35 max health. At level 2 will give a 20% buff to health regen bonuses from all sources, and at level 3 unlocks Adrenaline Rush Mode. Adrenaline Rush Mode allows blood pump cyberware and health items to give adrenaline equal to 30% max health. Adrenaline is indicated by a yellow bar, and acts like extra health by absorbing damage. Rush remains active as long as you have adrenaline available, but it decays over time and is removed with damage. I keep mentioning all the perks as literally one of my favorites, and Quake is definitely one of them, and at level 3 allows you to violently slam the ground, damaging and staggering nearby enemies with a chance of knockdown. You can also do this in midair if you have superhero landing unlocked. 
Savage Sling unlocks a new finisher where you can throw your enemies, aka the aforementioned June Chugger. Those are the perks shown off in the menus, all which seem to be a very nice departure from the kind of boring ones that we have now. So many new synergies and things to keep in mind, which is all we can really ask for. A screen is also shown where you're in the debuff range with maxed out cyborg slots here. The perks that increase your capacity include Edge Runner and Renaissance Punk, but you can also increase this as you level up and with Cyberware Capacity Shards, which are likely scattered around the map. These abilities were also shown off, but before they were, CDPR mentions that you can reset attributes once. Your perk points you will be able to respend, and you can also tweak them on the fly, helping you experiment a bit more within those specific attributes. Interesting new update here, but it was mentioned by people playing the hands-on demos of PL that the level cap had increased to 70 but the devs here do actually clarify that it's 60. Armor seems to be only associated with Skeleton and this system that I cannot pronounce for the life of me, so don't expect armor buffs for anything else including your legs and arms. We move to the showcase of these perks and skills in a strong solo, where blunt weapons have new targeting animations. Quake is also shown off, which looks really fun if I'm being honest, as well as the empowered punches. Dogtown looks great here, and the Vargas have some diverse enemy types and vehicles. Speaking of Dogtown, it's mentioned as being much more post-apocalyptic and dystopian, and it's an area consumed by time and being reclaimed by nature. A variety of social layers exist here, although Corpos and the NCPD are not welcomed into the district. Really cool moment from this showcase is that you actually get to step into the boots of Colonel Kurt Hansen, in a similar way that you got to play moments from Silverhand's perspective in the base game. We can see him walking around the Black Sapphire, which is his bunker that is surrounded by a military encampment. He also runs the propaganda machine and lets Dogtown residents know that the president crashing is a hoax and that the citizens shouldn't worry, which is odd considering in the story trailer he's mentioning this all over the megaphones. So I guess we'll have to see if there's a branching path that changes the dialogue. Dogtown's story will also take you to new locations within Night City and Mr. Hands plays a much more prominent role in the story of Phantom Liberty versus the fixers from the base game. A new apartment is mentioned for Dogtown and the devs say that it is quite unique and plays into the storyline. We already know this, but they confirm no new romances here for the PL expansion. They move on to the police system and vehicle combat gameplay segments and first person shooting actually looks pretty damn fun. You can use turrets, pistols, SMGs, and mounted missile racks, but you can also hack other cars and other passengers in those cars, in both first and third person. Hacking cars will require the relevant perk and a cyber deck, but as you spec more into the net running tree, more vehicle specific quick hacks will open up to you. One is even the remote control of enemy cars, which sounds awesome. The increased police response is shown off with the climax being max tag and randomly generated bosses. There are five different boss archetypes, and we learn that regardless of your difficulty setting, max tag will be tuned to hard at the very least. They can also hack your vehicle, and we can see the bar going up in first person here. The police system is pretty robust, and you can actually get gangs to help you take them down. You can intervene with transports and open world activities to get the police and Vargas to respond, and any crime will generate your first wanted star or level. Another tidbit here, but Militech is the policing entity of the Badlands. The Bargast are the ones in Dogtown, and the NCPD have jurisdiction everywhere else, although MaxTech will be present all across the open world. Vehicle gigs are the new activity with endless replayability, and will be issued by El Capitan. It gives you random favors to do like killing targets, hacking other vehicles, interacting with gangs or factions, and a few others to complete. These targets are referred to as dynamic and change all the time. When it comes to what will actually be free versus what will be paid, the devs mention that the relic skill, Dogtown, and the new story is gated behind the expansion, but the perk overhaul, revamped skills, revamped police, and vehicle combat are coming for free in 2.0. So that's everything you have to know about the latest Red Stream. I just saved you an hour, you're welcome. And as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in, and if you enjoyed the content, do consider subscribing and joining the channel. I will see you guys in the next one.